Hey guys, welcome back to Diecast Resurrection. Today we are going up against the Bear Metal in a movie car challenge. So we're going to be starting off with this 57 Chevy Bel Air. And we are going to turn this into a beloved movie car. Which will be from the movie The Hollywood Nights. There's a bright yellow Chevy 210 hot rod on there that kind of stole the show in my opinion. That thing is sick. So we're going to turn this little Bel Air into that Chevy 210 coupe. That's what we're working on today. Check out that interior. I really like that. It's a nice touch. Nice touch. Okay, so this hood, this hood, and these bumpers, everything here has got to go. I'm going to strip this off. So I'm going to see if I can just chip away at this plastic, and usually you can. Just kind of give it a good scraping. And yeah, just like that. Pretty easy to remove our uh, our pieces here. We've got our front bumper off. We'll do our back bumper here. And again, you just kind of scrape away at this the melted stuff. And then you can just push it right out. And then this, all these uh, holes here are for different models of Bel Airs where they might have engines sticking out. So this particular one's got a hood on it. We just got to get rid of these two rivets and that hood is gonzo. So it's perfect. So we're going to do that. Let's pop these out now. There we go. Hood is gone. We got to get rid of these headlights. And again, they're just kind of melted in there with a little plastic rivet. So I just kind of grab at them with my tweezers and then you just push them out and it's just that easy all right that's some pretty nice looking paint but we've got a mission to do here we've got a mission It's crazy how this stuff works. Just peel it off. Okay, I think I've taken this far enough. I'm going to go give this a scrub with a brass brush and some hot soapy water and get all this cleaned up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got a little ways to go. I'm trying to make this look like that. Got some differences here we got to take care of. Down here on the bottom, on a Bel Air, there's a big aluminum trim piece that went here. And our 210 doesn't have that. So we got to smooth that out. First and foremost, I'm just going to take some of this off with a file until we get down to the point where we can sand. You can really see how uneven this casting is at the bottom, so we're going to true that up as well. Since we started off with you know a casting where I could just remove the hood perfectly, you know, we got to go the extra mile and get the rest of these details right because I don't want you guys to think that this was actually easy. So we're gonna have to make a bunch of custom stuff under the hood. Got to do a rad support. Got to build a radiator. So we're gonna play with some styrene today for the first time. See how that goes. 
sure it'll be fine. Okay, so this side's done. Got that trim piece, gonzo. So now I gotta do the same on this other side. I'll probably do that off camera. Just, you know, this, this takes a little while. This doesn't, doesn't just come right off. So I'm gonna work on the other side and then we will come back and move to the next step. Okay, so now both sides are taken care of. That trim piece is gone. Next step, we're gonna delete these windshield wipers. I'm using a small box file. I'm just gonna slowly ease into them here. So you don't want windshield wipers cramping your style. Here we go. Say goodbye to the wipers. We don't want no wipers on our hot rod. Okay, now, next step. It's gonna start getting tricky here. <laughs> I mean, it's been a little tricky, been a little bit tricky so far, but now our car didn't have any of this big trim insert between these two pieces of molding. So we gotta get rid of all these lines in here and the Bel Air. I'm still thinking in my head how, how we're gonna tackle this trim. It's gonna be a doozy. You just kind of move on to something else and just let it stew and then you'll be like, oh, I know, I'm going to do this. Okay, we're going to try a Dremel tool to get in there. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be crazy, but I don't, I don't know if we have much of a choice at this point. I'm going to have to get to the precision, into the precision tools here. Get something sharp. Heck. Sharp as heck. So it's a pretty good start. You can see everything's getting kind of smoothed out in here. Okay, so I've got both sides looking pretty good now. Now I'm going to put some steel on my Dremel and we're going to do a high speed pass and kind of clean this up. This may not look like much right now, but once we get paint in there and we get that trim popping, then it's going to look like something special. So I got to make sure this trim's looking real smooth right now because I'm not going to have another chance to do it once she's painted. I'll use the sponge for this. You know, trim looking flush. Now I gotta do our posts here to make our car a coupe and I got some cotter pins but they're too big so I need to grind them down a little bit, get them smaller so we get into the right scale. Just wanna get a rough guesstimate here. Gonna have to do some filing. Did 
Daddy's gonna lose it. They can't handle it. I can't handle it. I've never been so mad in my life trying to get these in place. Oh, dear God. Putting these posts in has to be the most infuriating thing I've ever done. So I'm not just putting in one, I'm putting in two side by side. Hopefully everything dries good and it cleans up nice and it doesn't look like it's uh, anything other than a factory post. So here's hoping. Okay, I'm done freaking out. Desk looking like a bomb went off over here. I'm ready to file back all my glue and reclaim my little posts now. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna admit that was, uh, that was extremely painful. No part of putting those in was fun at all. The area is a mess. Stressed out. Alright, so we're mixing some paint here. Trying to get our proper shade of this kind of creamy yellow we got going on. I don't know if it's been uh, repainted since the movie. So I know this car been around for a long long time yeah that's what we're looking for gonna prime our car with our Autoborn sealer it's a nice light coat Got our yellow I mixed up. All right, so here's our car. Got our paint job on there. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Now it's time for us to work on this trim. And most people would paint this trim with their chrome pen. We ain't doing that today. Let's check this out. You want detail on your chrome trim? This is how we do it. What do you think of that? So whenever you have a raised trim, get your paint on, let it dry, get a nice big ball of sandpaper that's really firm and it's not going to flex. Because I don't want to sand the body here. So I need a pretty rigid piece of sandpaper and I'm just going to sand the top of my trim until it's all exposed 
and where you're going to have the most accurate trim that anyone has ever seen. And there you go, you can't ask for, for more realistic chrome trim than that. Just impossible to do better than that. You'll never be able to paint that. It's reflective, it's shiny, it's chrome, and it's just the casting so showing through. So all we got to do now is clear coat this whole thing, and that's locked in there forever as just perfect, perfect chrome trim. Isn't that awesome? For feeling super bold, we could even do these door handles. I don't know how bold I'm feeling. Be super, super, super careful. We're gonna do these real careful. I should be just painting these. To be honest, it's like not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. There. There's a perfect little door handle. Isn't she a beauty? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clear coat this up before I mess anything up. Right now I feel like it's just at a perfect point. And I need to get this cleared just so I don't chip or scratch anything. If I scratch the clear coat, I can always just sand and polish. So I really want to get this cleared right now. Because I'm freaking out, man. I feel like we'd have a very basic interior. So I was thinking I'll just do some details here. With the chrome pen. Those little door handles painted up. Those window cranks. This whole thing in here is an a big aluminum bezel. I've got to get all this. I feel like the pen might not be the way to go here. It's going to be easier to just paint over the gauges. Than to go around them. This has proven to be a challenge, especially around this camera. Get that done, and we'll do this horn ring. Get the center of our steering wheel. So that's a pretty good representation of a 1957 Chevy interior. Pretty plain, nothing too crazy. We're going to call that done. I've got a lot of work to do here on our engine compartment. Oh, the ISO is killing me. Turn that down. What do you think of that? Hot damn, Courtney. Hot damn. This thing is insane. So I took the liberty of putting some M2 style craggers on our chassis here and I just want to uh, make sure everything is the right size. It's one of the few movie cars I've seen that you know didn't have ridiculously huge tires. This is a pretty modest modest little car. Honestly that is about right. It's about right. So I found this out of another car. I'm gonna have to trim it down. 
So when you're doing a build like this, you're sourcing a lot of parts. <laughs> Hell yeah. Looks in shade. You check out my pictures. Yeah, our engine's got to go back a little bit. Bloop, 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 bloop. That looks quite a bit better. So we should have a rad support immediately in front of the engine and then a radiator. Alright, so we're going to cut out some styrene here. That's supported. Then the real car, this engine's so tight that they got the pulleys off the front of it and they got the rad support just above touching it. So they got to have the rad in front of this support. So I might go ahead and just glue this on to our engine. Rad support, ugly rad. I like it. Just gonna let that dry just how it is. Just like that. I didn't have the right kind of scoop for this car. So just going with what I got. Real car didn't have any butterflies. So. Make sure our Chevy logo's facing the right direction here. Bloop, 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 bloop. I'm gonna have to do something about that gold. Might try wash it out with a little bit of silver here. Get our back bumper back on. Just dabbing them holes. Oh, I should dab these holes too. And these holes. That's the beauty of these M2 cars. It doesn't take much to make them like crazy, crazy good looking. Right, nothing fancy, we're just going to glue down our motor. There we go, I think we're done. I'd like to figure out maybe some more detailing up in the front here in the hood region. Gotta get rid of some of this gold in this grill, so I'm using some chrome out of my Molentau chrome pen. Put a little fan on here. It doesn't really look like a fan, but it represents the fan. Just getting tough to do, you know, when it's this small. Just want to throw a little bit of white on these. There. Perfect. We're done. What a journey. I have never worked so hard on a car in my life. We put out some pretty sweet cars here, but this thing was the most labor intensive car I have ever touched. Okay, well, I gotta say, just turning this car into a coupe was hard enough. The trim was impossible. The paint was pretty basic for me. But overall, man, what a challenge this was. I want to say thank you to Bare Metal for accepting my challenge. I was surprised he picked movie cars, but I'm glad he did because this really pushed the limits of my skill. I've only been doing this uh, for about five, six months now. And man, I had to do some stuff today that I never thought I would. So 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't met Bear Metal, he's the granddaddy of diecast restorations and repair tips and everything. So I'm going to leave a link in the description for his channel. Also, make sure you go watch his challenge video, which I'll post a link for. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.